Hello and welcome back to another video. Uh, I often get asked uh, a lot of times what are you know suitable um, small trees for smallish you know modern gardens and um, I thought I'd show you this. This isn't in my garden. I sometimes occasionally um, do some you know um, gardening here for the for the lady that the lady that lives here she lives on her own she's quite elderly and um, I just do bits and pieces whenever um, and we look at, a, a, at an apple tree and bear in mind this is the middle of August and as you can see um, if I move in a little bit closer now probably um, there is, you know, some really good size apples on this tree already. This tree was set um, in 1975, so, um, you know, it's not far off 50 years old um, now. And still a relatively very small tree. I, I don't know um, what rootstock it was um, planted on, um, you know, um, back then. But now you can get all sorts of dwarf, you know, to full-size apple trees, apple trees that you can grow in a container on a patio even. But um, this, you know, is a smallish tree. You know, it um, it never has anything done to it. It's never pruned hardly. If it gets a little bit out of control in wet years, little bits are cut off it here and there, and any dieback is cut off it. And that's about as much as been done to it in 50 years. And. Um, the interesting thing about this apple tree is it's um, a, a coddling apple which is one of the first apples to be ready and um, bear in mind I picked some off this apple tree two weeks ago and made an apple crumble with them and they were super, they were lovely. Um, so that was right at the end of July. Um, you know, if you have a Bramley apple tree or one of the other renowned uh, cooking apple trees, obviously, you know, could be another month, could be another two months before, you know, you've got apples suitable to harvest. Certainly on into September um, with a Bramley. And even then you should probably leave them till sort of early October. Um, and, you know, this tree has... I've never ever known it not have apples on. I suppose it's quite sheltered here. Um, this ground, um, this is not far from where I live and this was all orchard, this ground. So it's, it's pretty good ground and, and suits apple trees of all shapes and sizes. Um, we've got a scrabby old um, cox tree at the side of it there. And um, as you can see, I've just, this is just what I've picked up. Um, I picked them up off the floor last week and I've just picked them up off the floor again this week and I've probably done that <laughs> for the last, you know, four or five weeks now. So it just shows you how much fruit this little tree has, um, has had on. As I say, so this is a coddling variety and I believe it's a Keswick coddling uh, apple tree. Um, I can't confirm that, but looking at the apples and and the shape, the colour and the form of them, I would lay money that it's a Keswick coddling apple tree. Uh, coddling apples were very, very popular in Victorian times. Um, I think the word, the old English word is coddle, is uh, to cook very gently. Um, hence you have coddled eggs, don't you? And one of the two things um, in that nature. And this apple doesn't need a lot of cooking. Um, it does indeed, um, if you like an apple that pulps down very quickly, then the coddling apple is, you know, great for that. Um, you know, it's not like a Bramley that, you know, retains some of its, you know, hardness and form, even probably when cooked. The coddling, you know, goes down to like a pulp very quickly. Um, I like that. Some people don't like that in an apple. Um, I believe, um, there again in Victorian times, coddlings were a jewel apple. You know, some people would eat them because um, it's not a sour apple, um, particularly uh, where it gets the sun and the apples turn a little bit yellow. Um, I'll try and pick some and show you those. Um, so a good all-round um, apple tree, in my view, for a small garden, if you want, you know, 
Bramley apple trees can be quite problematical, even on the, um, you know, the more dwarfing rootstock that we've got today. And a little bit of history, I think the Keswick, where, where the name Keswick comes from, um, is a one John Sander of Keswick in 1793, actually, you know, bred this tree and, and um, that was the forerunner of where it came from and hence why it is termed you know, the Keswick Coddling. And um, I'll pick a few and um, show you. The lady here doesn't use them sadly or uses very little. And so, you know, unless I pick them, they just fall off and um, get put in the recycling bin, which is a shame really. So I picked a few of these apples, um, quite enough for what, for what I was going to make, just an apple crumble. Um, and you can see um, they're not a, a, a massive apple by any means. And you can see the, um, where, they, where they catch the sun, they do, do go kind of a nice, you know, um, yellowy tint. And, um, you know, you, you know they're ready because you only have to touch them and <laughs> it's quite funny really just while I was picking them I think I had about three or four hit me on the head uh, the tree is so loaded um, never a big apple you know there again that's probably another reason you know why supermarkets would never stop this kind of apple because people you know would say oh we haven't got time to peel those and you know um, do them, do anything with them and obviously this tree is never sprayed it's, you know, never had any apples taken off as you probably should do in June, you know, it's just left, it flowers. It has the most wonderful pinkish um, blossom. Uh, one of the most gorgeous um, blossoms that I know on an apple tree. Um, so it's worth it, you know, as an ornamental kind of tree. And I say this tree has been here 50 years and is not very big at all. Um, so um, I shall certainly enjoy these. And as I say, they, they certainly do, if you like an apple that pulps down, um, you know, the Keswick Codlin is a, a wonderful apple in that, in that respect. Won't keep, that's another reason, you know, probably why, you know, it's gone out of fashion. If I put these in a plastic bag and keep them in a cool place, these, and you have to keep watching them because there's some, you know, there's little marks on them and that's where they start to go, you know, where they've been bruised on the tree. Um, they, you know, obviously do deteriorate very quickly and, you know, they would probably last two to three weeks in this state. Um, uh, but I don't pick many at a time, you know, and um, the, it's always the same with apple trees. It's not an easy apple tree to get to here because nobody picks them or nobody bothers about it and um, the best ones are always at the top so um, towards the end I just pick the windfalls up and then use them straight away on the day that I pick them up kind of thing and they're fine like using them like that um, but today I have picked a little group in there and um, I might well go foraging um, later on in the week for some blackberries and make a you know a simple blackberry and apple crumble so easy to, you know um, to make what is it four ounces of flour um, I always use butter two ounces of butter because it gives it more of a shorty cake kind of crumble with butter and two ounces of just ordinary caster sugar um, you know rub the butter have the butter at room temperature rub it into the flour add the sugar get it like breadcrumbs running through your fingers pop your apples down in a saucepan for a few minutes on the hob put them into a dish crumble on the top 30 minutes in quite a moderate oven job done now what could be easier than that um, so there we go that is the Keswick coddling apple um, an old variety but still in my view for early apples um, very useful for small gardens As always, many thanks for watching and wherever you are in the world, good gardening. And um, I'll catch up with you soon with another video. And thank you as always for your likes, comments and for subscribing to the channel. It's very kind of you. And um, I'll see you very soon. Until that point in time, bye for now.